the Lord shows us or have us focus on something different. I want to take the time to um, look at the songs that we were singing, the one that says, Standing on the Promises of God. It says in verse 2, Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear sail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God is a blessing for me when the Lord confirms some of the things that he would want to say to you. I, I wasn't going to start here, but I feel as though I should in Romans chapter 4. And then we'll see how the Lord leads from that point on. Romans chapter 4, I, I've been really thinking about this. Look, we are supposed to be the seed of Abraham because we have faith like Abraham. And the Lord says that will he find faith when he comes back to the earth. And then he tells us to fight the good fight of faith. Well, when you read scriptures, we, I grew up hearing about scriptures, you know, like they would have times when people would come together and they would, they would celebrate Easter, which we didn't understand that Easter was a pagan holiday, but part of the celebration required that you would get what we always knew as an Easter speech. So the, the Easter speech was memorizing scripture and standing before a church and quoting the scripture that you were able to memorize. And the, the bigger the scripture you were able to remember would be the bigger speech that, that you would have. So we grew up understanding that there was that of different scriptures, but we didn't understand what the scriptures meant. Or we would go to church where a preacher would quote a scripture and then he would just scream and shout for an hour or so and you would leave not really knowing or understanding anything about God. But in our ministry for a long time the Lord has been using the scriptures to teach us. But now when we go back and look at the same scriptures that we are able to quote, they have such a deeper meaning and a deeper revelation and understanding of what the Lord meant by these words. And now it's almost mind-blowing to see how the scriptures apply to what we see taking place in the earth today. Am I making sense to you? So everything that we see taking place can take away your faith. <laughs> and without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. And it's hard to have faith in something that you can't see when what you do see is so dark and evil and you feel it could make you feel helplessness and despair. That's why the Lord says we walk by faith and not by sight. That's another example because if, you, if you're moved and controlled and regulated by what you see, you wouldn't have any faith and you wouldn't be able to continue to stand or walk. Am I making sense? So in Romans chapter 4, Verse 19, it says, well, 18, it says, Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory. See, when you're strong in faith, you give glory to God. And this is the scripture that I kept over and over from time to time hearing. I needed this for me. Being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he, God, was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, 
who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. We have to be fully persuaded that the word of God, the scriptures, Jesus dying on the cross, being raised from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, we have to be fully persuaded that that happened and that God is able to do what he has promised in his word to do. That's why he tells us, do not grow weary and well-doing, for you will reap if you faint not. So for him to say you will reap if you faint not means the opportunity is going to present itself for you to be weak, for you to grow weary, <laughs> for you to faint. Do you understand what I'm saying? For you to lose faith, fight the good fight of faith. That's what you have to fight for is your faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. God knows everything. There's nothing that's going on in this world that the Lord is unaware of. So even though everything we see, the billboards, the programs, the commercials, the, 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 the dramas, the songs, the videos, the, the symbols on cars, the symbols on the food, everything that's a part of our life is symbolic of darkness, a reflection of darkness. That's what we see everywhere we, everywhere we go, with the people we work with, the people we go to school with. Everything around us is dark. Even though that's what we are seeing, God still is in control and God is bigger than what we see. And we have to be fully persuaded of that. Am I making sense to you so far? Right now, we are faced with an election. And God is in control of that too. And the fact to me that who we are forced or faced with voting for is an indication to me of God's judgment. Now let me show you. Turn to Genesis 15 just to show you that everything is, is, is organized and pre-planned -pre by God based on your choices and decisions, your free will and your decisions. God desires for nobody to perish. God desires to bless you and to give you life and to give it to you in abundance. But when you go along with laws in the world that goes against the laws of God or the precepts of God, then you bring judgment onto you and onto your nation. And everybody suffers because the rain falls on the just and the unjust. When it rains, it just don't fall on a few people. It falls on everybody. When judgment comes, it comes to everybody who's living in that area. But God still is able to keep those who belong to him, who's going to carry out his will, his purposes, and his plans. In Genesis 15, am I making sense? It says in verse 15, God talking to Abraham, he said, Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, Abraham. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, your, your, your lineage. And this is the part I want you to get to. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So there's a there's a there's a there's a amount there's an amount of fullness of sin that God will allow each each nation, each group of people, and then after they complete the fullness of their sin without changing, God's judgment comes on those people. The things that has been hidden from us as a people, as a nation, that our nation has been doing to other peoples in the world. Is so abominable. The evil, the wickedness, the perversion, the greed, the death, the murder, the immorality. I mean, the stuff that our nation is involved in is horrible. And they're using our taxpayer monies to do it with. And we as Christian people as a whole, we didn't stay close enough to God to pray for God. To pray for God to move. To pray for forgiveness. To pray for repentance. To pray for protection for those people who our nation is sending our troops out to die for as mercenaries to destroy 
abominations. Am I making sense to you? God sees nothing about what's going on in this world is hidden from God. This is another scripture in Isaiah 59 that I kept thinking about and thinking about. I really try to spend my time researching, studying, trying to look, trying to understand, trying to do whatever I can do to understand and put the dots together to make things make sense to you. Thank you, Jesus. So Isaiah 59 has kept coming up in my heart over and over again. Thank you. Isaiah 59. Look at verse 15. It says, Truth fails. Isn't that something? And he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. He that departs from evil makes himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and has displeased him that there was no judgment. Now, let me give you the definition of the word prey. It means an animal that is it that is hunted by another and killed for food. Do you do you hear what I'm saying? So when you turn away from evil, you don't want to have anything to do with evil because right now the word everybody is is calling evil good and good evil. And in Isaiah 5, 19 and 20, it says that's what, what's going to happen in the future. So we understand that what we see taking place in the world today is evil. But we've turned or we try our best to turn away from that evil and that makes us a prey. And being a prey means that we're going to be hunted for the purpose of making food of us. And that might sound crazy because it doesn't make sense. But there's things that's taken place in this earth that we don't know about or don't understand that has happened before. And that was hidden from us that it was happened that it happened before. Am I making sense to you? Now I want to give you some definitions or some words rather I want you to look up. I'll give you a little bit of information about it. I want you to look up magnetar. M-A-G. N-A-T-A-R, magnetar. Magnetar is a type of neutron star with extremely powerful magnetic field. One of those things hit the earth in 2004 on December 27. And you can look this up. And I want you to get in the habit of looking things up when I give it to you so that you're not just taking my word for this stuff. These are the kinds of things that, that is interesting to me. The scripture says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And when you look around, you find people who are not even interested in getting any knowledge. Okay? Another word is coronal hole. C-O-R-O-N-A-L. Coronal Hall is, a, is, is, a, is solar winds that is emitted from the sun. And when it, it can strike the earth as a, a, a solar power like electricity that can cause the, the electrical grid to, to, tick, to get on fire. And yeah, yeah, that's what I said emits. And one of those hit back in 1859. I also want you to look up Coral C, C O R A L, because on Monday, a media hit the Coral C in Australia. See, we don't know about things that's happening, in this, and this is the thing all of the stuff that is in the scripture that God is telling his people to be sober and alert and watchful and prayerful about because you've never seen it before you don't know what it would look like when you see it but when you put all of the pieces together what you see is God's word is coming to pass right before your eyes 
Am I making sense to you? We have fish die off. I showed you that in Hosea. We have birds dying off. We see the trees dying. These are things that we are seeing. Nobody has to tell us about this. We are able to see this from everyday living. If you're paying attention. There's unnaturally an unusual high amount of the trees. They say that 55% of the trees in the forest on the earth have died. 55%. That's more than half. And they're, they're saying that since 1930, the people who are in government all over the world know about a planet that's bigger than the earth and they've named it Lucifer. And they've named a, a satellite called Osiris Rex to go look for it. And, and it's something about the, um, the Bennu bird. Now, if you look up Osiris and you look up the Bennu bird, all of this stuff goes back to Egyptian and Sumerian times. This planet, they say, the governments have, of the earth have known about it since the 1930s. And they're building underground bunkers. And cities, cities that's hundreds and hundreds of feet deep in the earth supposedly to protect themselves from what they know and believe is coming to the earth. There's a science called Keiko. You can look him up. K-A-K-O. He's a physicist. Even he is concerned. And he's a futurist. He believes in transhumanism and um, all of the the things that is against God. He believes in those things. And he's concerned about the sun and the sun flares. Am I making sense to you? They're not telling people the things that they need in order to be prepared. You can't prepare to die. But you can prepare in case you don't die that you would be able to survive because hurricanes and storms, there's a storm coming up the east coast called Matthew that they say is, is packing wind at 150 miles an hour. These are the things people are partying and happy and going on with their everyday life and they don't even know any of this stuff is happening. Turn to 2 Peter. Second Peter. Jesus loves us. People are scoffing and they are mocking God. And this is another scripture. I walk around thinking about scriptures and, and, and asking God to speak to me in my heart. And I just find myself, Lord, help me understand. Chapter 3 of Second Peter. All what Jesus did, he did it because he loves humanity. We are his creations. He's given us through Jesus a way out, a way of escape. Not your physical body, but your, your eternal soul, your eternal spirit. The enemy is angry with us who turn to God and won't move away from God. And it's, to me, the, the scripture in Isaiah is mind-blowing. The people who turn from evil become prey. Hmm. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And, and for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the waters and in the, and in the water. Whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. Now I want to give you the definition of scoffer. Someone who jeers or mocks. Or treats something with contempt through false flags and false and misinformation the enemy is 
has for years used people to promote propaganda and misinformation to make people think something was going to happen and then when it didn't happen it caused people to think that the word of God is not accurate but the word of God is accurate and things are really taking place that they are hiding or not telling you about do you understand what I'm saying people are watching the skies people are looking out and, 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 and paying attention some people now turn to Luke is this making sense to you so far? Luke 21. Praise you, Father. I keep going over these scriptures over and over and over again with you because they have so great meaning and they apply to so much things that we experience from day to day. And each time you go back prayerfully, you will get a deeper understanding of it. There's no time to be lukewarm. There's no time to be straddling the fence. There's no time to not know God well enough to know when His Spirit is leading you. You need wisdom. You need discernment. And you can only get those by praying. The Lord says, if anyone is lacking in wisdom, let him pray. And God says, He'll give you wisdom without finding any faults in you. It's in the book of James, first chapter. We need wisdom. We need discernment. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to humble ourselves. There's no time to be prideful and arrogant and boastful, but we need to walk in love and humility and be alert and prayerful and sober at all times. Someone is on without muting. Luke 21. Look at verse 7. It says that they asked his disciples, him saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign shall be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed. Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. And the time draws near. Go you not therefore after them. There's a man in Russia who is telling people he's Jesus. And people are walking in mosquito infested woods to get to this man. And they're showing you these are professional people, lawyers and different kinds. And the people are crying and praying and bowing down to this man and believing that he is Jesus. These are the things that people need to be teaching. Instead of going after the gospel of prosperity and the gospel of name it and claim it, Jesus Christ is the gospel to give you eternal life. Not in this world, but in the world to come. Am I making sense? Time draws near. Go you there, go you not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. See, God already knew. Jesus already knew when he walked on the earth what things had to come to pass. And the people who know the scriptures will be able to understand and recognize when they see these things coming to pass. God is saying, don't be terrified because these things have to come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation. Thank you, Jesus. And kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse or different places. And famines and pestilences. And fearful sights. Underline. Fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. That's what a magnetar. If you research what a magnetar is. If you research what they call in the... They saying that that telescope on Mount Graham, we all know is called Lucifer. The reason why they put that telegram to um, that, that telescope up there is to look for the big t the, a planet called Planet X. And they have nicknamed it Lucifer. 
So they got a telescope named Lucifer that's looking for the planet they call Lucifer. And it looks like a dragon with, with wings and a snake, snake on either side of it. This is some serious stuff. So if you research, and don't take it from one source, but every time somebody gets on the internet and try to sound an alarm and give out this type of information, they discredit the person by calling them loony or conspiracy theorists or, or just perversion. So that's why it's important for you to know the scriptures. And this has been happening for a while and they've been diverting money and using it to build bunkers. And if you look and research, you will see pictures of the cities that they have built underground. The caskets, the bullets, the, the ready-made foods. So if the government is preparing, they're not preparing for you. They are preparing for themselves and for people who have money. So it's up to you to be hid in Christ, to be prayerful, to be alert. When I was a kid, in the summertime, people used to buy fruit and vegetables and they used to can it. So that when storms came, because storms used to come by in the south when I was a kid, and people light used to go out and they used to be able to have food by burning wood or they knew how to grow things or they would be prepared. And what the enemy has done through humanity and government is made humanity dependent on other people instead of being dependent on yourself and God. Am I making sense to you? They've dumbed people down and programmed people and, and they have gone as far as passing laws to make it illegal for you to grow organic food in, in the farms or have gardens or have stockpile of food and water because they want humanity to die and the ones who survive, then they'd be able to enslave you without any revolt. That's why they're not telling you about all of this stuff that's happening. Am I making sense to you today? Jesus loves you. Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ is God. And he made a way of escape. And we have to be like Abraham and be fully persuaded that God is able to do what he's promised. We are host beings for evil spirits. But our spirit is sealed with the Holy Spirit when we believe in Christ Jesus. But our bodies, our souls are still able to be tormented and harassed and afflicted and influenced with evil spirits. And they try to steal your faith and steal your power and your strength strength and your energy because we are electric magnetic people and they try to steal your energy from you that's how they use you as food and pray am I making sense to you all right then let's read on verse 11 and great earthquakes shall be in different places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall be from heaven but before all these they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Even though this is, you can see the writing on the wall that this is going to start happening here. And it's happening here more than it's being reported because the news is not the news. And people are, people are losing their heads and they've lost their homes and they've devastated the Middle East. Millions of people have lost their lives. They were dipped in oil, dipped in acid, put, cut their heads off and thrown in the ocean. Barbaric, demonic, diabolical things are taking place already in this earth. And these are the things God said was going to happen. But because we don't see them day to day, we're not living in those areas. And it's not yet happening here the way it already is happening there. That's how the enemy is able to convince you that the word of God is not true. That's why you need to study. You have to have a good prayer life. You have to press through. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You can't be moved by the thoughts, the fiery darts. That's the fiery darts are the thoughts that the enemy tries to use to convince you to lose your faith and to lose confidence in the word of God. We have to make up your mind that you're going to be persuaded and confident that you're not going to cast therefore away your confidence in the word of God. 
the word of God, the truth of God. Jesus is the truth. The word is Jesus. Jesus is the word and the word is truth. Am I making sense? All right. Verse 13. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore, underline, settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. But this is interesting. You shall be betrayed both by parents, brethren, kinfolk, kinfolks, friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. See, that's what they're trying to set an environment right now for your neighbors, your workers, and everybody to tell on you for not being politically correct, breaking them down in modern day time. This is what's taking place. They're trying to create an environment where if, they, if somebody see you doing something in the store, call the police on you. If you go to the bank and take out too much money or make up too big a deposit, call the police on you. This is the Bible is telling us these. This is what's going to happen. And it's happening, but you're not recognizing it. Because if you were recognizing it, you would get serious about your walk and your relationship with God. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. We see that happening. You can talk about anything, just don't talk about Jesus. Because the enemy knows the power in Jesus. But there shall not put... There shall not put an hair of your head perish. There shall not an hair of your head, head perish. And your patience possesses, possess you your soul. Underline, and your patience possess you your soul. You see, being patient, not growing weary, not giving up. You possess your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation therefore is nay or nigh. Jerusalem is compassed right now by armies. Turkey, Jordan, everybody is Iran, Iraq. They all want to destroy Israel. And I don't know who's living in Israel and I don't know why God allowed the people who's in Israel to be there, but God also in Revelation talks about those people who say that they are Jews and is, is not. It doesn't matter because God says he has written his name on Jerusalem forever. Whoever's there doesn't matter. God says that's his place where he's placed his name. And that's why the enemy is fighting so hard to take over possession and dominion of the place where God says he's put his name. Also, we're the temple of God. So the enemy is fighting really hard to make sure he take us over. Because he wants to sit in the temple of God. We are the temple of God. And you have to know who you are. Even though the enemy may be influencing your mind and tormenting and afflicting you. He cannot take away your spirit out of the seal of the Holy Spirit. And that's the confidence you have to have. Even when you're down for the last count, you got to get up and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in Jesus and I refuse to cast away my confidence in, in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for me at the cross. Drop down to verse 25. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun. That's what I just got through giving you the information about the magnetar. And in the moon, and in the stars, magnetar is a type of star. And upon the earth, distress of nations. The nations we see is all in distress with per perplexity. Let me give you the definition of perplexity. Perplexity. It's the inability to deal with or understand something complicated or unaccountable. I'll read it again. Perplexity is the inability to deal with or understand something complicated or unaccountable. So the, the Lord is telling, and these words, these are written, this is Jesus speaking. He says, nations will be in distress with 
perplexity so you're not going to be able to understand because it's too complicated for you to understand what's going to be happening. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear. That's what the enemy is trying to do. Make you so afraid. <laughs> and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the sun of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up. <laughs> That's what we should be doing. Looking up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. Do you understand what I'm saying to you today? Is this making sense? All right. I'm going to show you another scripture in Revelation. I have so much to share. Revelation chapter 8. Because they're also talking about wormwood. Revelation chapter 8. See, you, it's like the Bible, the, the word says that the scripture gives you comfort. So we should be comforted that God is revealing us this information through his word. And I want to tell you, you should prepare, even if it's just for a regular hurricane or a storm. And I have some of the things you should think about getting. A fire extinguisher, first aid, non-perishable food like peanut butter and canned soup and canned foods, especially foods with protein in it, water, bleach, a crank radio, candles, extra blankets, extra medication. These are the things that you can get for yourself. Um, sterno, things that you, you need to get, you need to sit down and put a list together. First aid stuff, you know, peroxide, acidophilus, because acidophilus helps. Um, oregano, oil of oregano. These are the things